A medieval tale directed by the man who brought us Gladiator, starring Ben Affleck, Adam Driver, Matt Damon, and Jodie Comer. Bring it on! Bring it on! What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Can Ridley Scott recapture the magic? that he's brought us every so often. I like him as a director, some ups, some downs. We're gonna talk about The Last Duel today. Spoiler free, is this movie worth watching in the theater? So in this film, King Charles declares that a knight should settle his dispute with his squire by challenging him to a duel. And like I said, this film stars the likes of Jodie Comer, Adam Driver, Matt Damon. Now, Ben Affleck is in here, and I think that was a topic of conversation. Look at his hair in the trailer. <laughs> he actually got on board with it as the movie progressed. Affleck, out of all of them, the surprise has to be his performance because I expected the leads of this film to crush it. But uh, just judging him off the trailer with the hair, I was like, yeah, Affleck's going to be good like he normally is. But is he going to crush it on the level that he did? I did not expect that. Just owning this role, as does Adam Driver, the way that he eloquently speaks to Affleck's character in this movie, he is favored even over Damon's character, who has been waiting in the wings for, I believe he says in the movie, 20 years to claim his rightful position that is taken from him. And I don't want to dive too deep into the plot here, but you have to know going in that there is this level of tension between these two characters that slowly builds, and it doesn't start out like that. We see that there is a relationship, a friendship there that, again, comes from great chemistry. And that chemistry, while subtle, and we don't get too many moments on screen with those two, uh, but when we get them, they plant enough information to know that there is a bond, that bond is torn apart, a lot of it has to do with Affleck, but there is another aspect of this movie that comes in when Jodie Comer's character, and yes, apologies for just saying the names of the actors and not the characters, but this cast is, I mean, it's got to be one of the best ensembles we have seen this year, and I'm not going to look past a possible nomination here, especially for Jodie Comer. Yes, Affleck is the surprise. Driver delivers like he always does. Matt Damon, he is as intense as you want and need him to be excellent in the role. Jodie Comer. And she's not the only character in which you get the perspective of. We'll talk about the story construction here in just a second. But when we finally get to see her outlook on all of this, it is beautifully put to screen by Jodie Comer, who was already so great in a movie like Free Guy earlier this year. Yeah, that was Jodie Comer. And now she's bringing it in the awards caliber role that I hoped this would be. It was that. Now, when you get into the actual story, it's a story of betrayal and love, hate, how all of those things can make someone do something that is despicable and something that you as an audience, as we watch happen on screen, we despise. Not only do we despise it the first time we see it, this story is told in three distinct parts, each part showing us the perspective of a different character. So at the beginning, we get to see from the perspective of Sergi. We see some of the battles that he's been a part of. We'll talk about the action itself here in a bit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Spectacular. Some of the best medieval action scenes getting ahead of myself. Uh, but we also see some irrational decision making that does not put him in good graces with someone like Ben Affleck's Pierre. So because of this, there is this ill will towards him already. And then someone that is referred to as a traitor. Well, it's his daughter that marries what we perceive as our main character. And at that point, there was a relationship established with drivers Jacquez, who becomes almost obsessed with the character of Margarita. And that's when in this first part, we see the event that, well, really this movie revolves around and thus comes the duel. Now, this is an event that is integral for the purpose of the film, but it's not something that you're going to want to watch multiple times like the movie chooses to show us. So that was a difficult thing to digest. But then we get the story that we just experienced and witnessed from an entirely different perspective in part two. And then we see it again in part three. What this film does, and something that I just wasn't expecting at all, I had no clue they were going to tell the story like this, we see the same story from three different perspectives, different pieces of information being told to us every time we come back to that moment in time. Also something that I thought was brilliant was the use of different camera angles, and then hearing conversations or seeing 
even a character movement that we didn't see the first time, but with different perspectives, even though there's information that overlaps, we also get the same information told to us a bit differently because that's how that character is going to recall it. So when we get it from one perspective, maybe that character is seeing it in a way that makes them look better, whereas the other perspective is seeing it in an entirely different way. Now, again, all of this is coming back to the fact that we as an audience can probably tell which version is more true than the other versions, but I do love the way that Scott chooses to present this story to us, and then, of course, it all culminates with the name of the movie, so it's not a spoiler, The Last Duel. And once we get that duel, uh, of course, it's preceded by numerous action scenes that were just expertly shot. I mean, from the cinematography to the grand epic score, it's really well done. But The Last Duel itself, I was just so locked in on because even though you can kind of see certain things coming, so I guess in that way it's somewhat predictable, the way that it all happens is not. And the fact that we get certain moments that I just wasn't expecting, that made for it to be just a brilliant conclusion to a story that, and a lot of people are going to have an issue with the pacing here. It's a long movie. It's a slower film. Uh, and I will admit there were a couple of scenes and maybe even character perspectives that I wish we would have just gotten less of. And then characters themselves, when we're getting certain moments over here, I'm like, why couldn't we get some more with this character who's just kind of sitting in the background, even someone who witnessed an event, but we don't get a lot of information about. I felt like that was somewhat of a missed opportunity from Ridley Scott. But at the end of the day, the way that the story culminates and comes together and is told, and I'm just a sucker for a good medieval movie, a film like Gladiator, something that Ridley Scott has done before and done extremely well, one of my favorites. And while The Last Duel isn't quite up to that standard, man, I I love this. I really did. I loved this movie. A tough watch at times, but one that I was just entranced by. Lastly, I'm really interested to see what the response is going to be about the three distinct parts. I could understand the perspective of, oh, why are they telling the same story over and over again? But just the minute details of different camera angles and the idea of getting a different type of insight from different perspectives, I find something like that to be fascinating. So before I give you guys my score, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you liked this review, let me know down below. Brilliantly paced and beautifully shot, The Last Duel proves that Ridley Scott can still tell an epic story. Jodie Comer is the standout here, but she is surrounded by an excellent cast. It is an important medieval tale that captures some brutal but outstanding action sequences. This is my cup of tea. I love this film. I'm going a 90%. Let me know what you guys think of The Last Duel down below. Uh, can Ridley Scott top this with what I believe will be an even bigger Oscar player in his little House of Gucci movie that's coming out that I'm also really looking forward to. So thank you guys so much for watching. You're truly the best. Come back to this channel. Plenty more reviews. And tomorrow, DC Fandome. I'll see you soon.